What's up, divas? And what's up, divos? It's your girl, April. So, you know what time it is. It is Real Talk Wednesday. So, this is where we dish out the tea, talk shit, whatever you want to call it. First off, I know I always tell you guys what's going on in my life. So, remember when I told y'all I was going to get my nails did at the Dollar Tree? Bam! Do you guys see that? Like, I hope you can see it on camera because it looks so freaking cute. But yes, hunties, yes. Dollar Tree nails, okay? All the girl had to do was use some glue and stick these babies on. I didn't have to polish. I didn't have to do anything. They are the right length for my fingers because you guys know I sew. I make wigs for a living. I do videos. I'm on the computer. So um, the longer the nail, it's just really hard for me. It's irritating. So uh, I'm trying to get it to focus. You know, hold on. Well, here they go. The closer I get to the camera. Oh, okay. So... Trying to get them to focus, but you guys know that I don't really like them too long because, of course, I have to work. I have to make wigs, and I'm not going to be able to do all of that. So I mixed and matched them, and I did a video tutorial. So I will have that up this, well, probably next week. I'm not really sure, but also today, for those of you guys who have been asking me, the camera will focus in a minute, but for those of you guys who have been asking me, um, how do I wrap stuff? Can I have a head wrap tutorial? Guess what, hunties? There are two videos um, posted on Wednesdays. I've been doing that for the past few weeks now. So one of those videos today is, of course, this video and also a head wrap tutorial. So keep in mind, the head wrap is 10 minutes, the tutorial, only because I did a talk through. Um, I have noticed like a lot of other videos that weren't talk throughs. You know what I mean? You know, I could talk my ass off. So it was a talk through video. I just kind of like to be very detailed because I'm a person who likes a lot of explanation to shit. You know what I'm saying? I like to write stuff down. I like to revisit. I don't like anybody going too fast, okay? Because that shit just pisses me off. So, and I don't like to have to keep rewinding. So, I did do a talk through and of course, that will be up today as well. So, make sure you check it out. If I haven't posted a link down below because I always am supposed to post some links down below in my videos and I never can Remember, oh my God, I freaking hate that. I hate when I do that. So I think that has to do a lot with OH. So yeah, so this is part one. There is a part two that I did um, and it's different ways. So it's a way like this, how I wrap this as well. So yes, and if you guys are wondering where did I get this from, this is actually from the 99 cent store. It was an affinity scarf, affinity eternity, whatever. It's all the same. And I cut it open and it's really great material. It's like that stretch material. So I love it. I absolutely love it. It's really long. And because it stretches, it gets kind of like you get more, you know what I'm saying? You get more. So yes, I got my nails did at the Dollar Tree and I'm so happy about that. They have been holding up. This is like day three. You see that. Mm -hmm. And so far, so good. Just some glue. And you know it is what it is. I did buy some new nails from BBB, BBB Fashions. And um, I like that store because they sell clothes. But some of them do sell hair, wigs and stuff. And shoes and accessories. And I seen these. These were so cute. They were $4.99. And I was like, oh, shoot. I'm about to get those. So these are a little bit longer, unfortunately, for me. But they are like the stiletto, like the claw-like stilettos. And I really thought these were so cute. So I will be um, playing with these if they were focused. I will be playing with these sooner than later, you know. If they didn't focus, I do apologize. But, yeah, I'll take a picture of them and post them so you guys can see. But they're really cute. They're, they're like so freaking cute like i love stuff like this maybe if i just take one out and you guys can see how cute it is it's so darling it has like these little like i can't really describe it but they're really cute um i'll take a picture and do a nail tutorial i don't know why my camera doesn't focus like it's supposed to it drives me crazy um i might not be doing something right it is what it is so, yes. Also, I got to send one of my divas out a special shout out to my girl, Brittany, who hooked me up with some fabulous drink recipes. Okay. So a girl will not have to sit here and drink 
a screwdriver anymore. So today, this is not a screwdriver. This is vodka, but it's got mango juice in it. Um, that thick um, mango smoothie juice in it. It's really good. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what you call it, but I'm fancy with my wine glass, which is plastic. You can get these right at the Dollar Tree. I've had these for some while, some while, some time. Because glasses don't last too long in my house. So, yes. So, anyway, also, I did promise a weight loss journey update. So I actually did come from the gym today um, and yesterday. Um, I worked out on the treadmill for 49 minutes today. I'm so proud of myself because when I first started going back to the gym and I was on the treadmill, oh my God, 49 minutes? Yeah, right. It would take me like just about that amount of time to get in at least a half a mile. So this time around, I did it actually a little bit over two miles. I was so happy with myself. I've been on the elliptical for like 30 minutes dying, but you know what I'm saying? I'm doing really well. I'm only down to 210 pounds, which is kind of depressing for me. Um, but you know what? Hey, I'm not going to rush it, and I'm not going to keep saying, oh, I'm, I'm mm, you know, I'm not going to whine about it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop getting on that damn scale because I don't really feel like I need to get on it every few days or every week. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get on like every two weeks because sometimes it can be a little bit discouraging when you get on and you've seen that you've only lost a pound or two, you know, so that was a little bit of discouragement to me today, but you know what? It is what it is. I did not go to the gym Friday, Saturday, and Sunday because the weekends are usually my days off and Friday, I was so, so busy that I did not have time to go. And when I finally got done what I was doing, which was like a massive load of videos, uploading, editing, um, wig, um, wig making and things like that, I said, you know what? I just want to lay down and go to sleep. So I actually went to bed pretty early for me. 1130 is really early for me because I normally don't go until like two o'clock to sleep. And I'll wake up at seven and six a.m., six a.m., excuse me, and I'm fine. But Friday I did not go. So, um... I was kind of kind of disappointed with myself, but I decided I'm only going to get on the scale every two weeks, and I'm just going to go ahead and do my thing. But I did notice a little bit of difference in, like, my mid area. Now, I'm not sure if it took anything away because it doesn't feel like it, but I when I put on, like, certain shirts that I've already had, like, I can see, like, with these shirts, the shirt was a little bit tighter in, like, this area, like, the belly area. They're not as... Um, they're not as tight, and I could see, like, a little bit of difference in how I look opposed to what I looked like, like, a month ago. So, I know that it takes time, and some people say that you lose the belly area really fat. I'm fat, I'm slow, that's, like, the last to go. And I'm like, okay, well, I need this. Some people call it a kangaroo pouch. Well, I'm sorry, but my kangaroo pouch should have been closed because my kids are older now, and, you know... It is what it is, but I have been doing that. I have been eating really healthy. I love to go to Papa Murphy's. Um, this is a pizza place where they can they make the pizza there for you, like make it up, and then you have to bring it home and bake it. I'm not really big on pizza, but when I do eat pizza from there, it's more or less a thin crust. It doesn't have any sauce on it. It's basically um, spinach and sun-dried tomatoes and chicken and garlic sauce, but I don't even go for that. I love their salads. So they have all these salads, these huge things, and I always go for the chicken Caesar salad, but you can have more stuff added to it. So I always get um, a little bit of bacon in it. It's real bacon and mainly artichokes because I love artichoke, okay? And I just absolutely love this salad. So I've been eating a lot of those. And also I have been, this young lady, um, she sent me this a while ago. This is by the, um, I'm not really sure how you pronounce this, um, but I actually did use their um, their other stuff before, like their tea that you drink that was cold, and it worked, and their drops and stuff, it worked, but as soon as you stop taking that stuff, it doesn't work anymore. Okay, so let's be real. Like, these things, the I think they're called ISO, ISO or Life Changing. I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. Total Life Changes. Okay, and this is their Delgada Slimming Coffee. So, um, I've been drinking this for three days. It's not really that great. It comes with 20 um, 
satchets inside of it. You can put sugar in it if you want to, but you know, sugar will give you um, more, it will just give you more fat. So I just drink it as it is. I'm not even a coffee drinker because I don't like coffee at all, but it doesn't taste so bad. But the first day that I drank this, I just noticed that I had to use the bathroom, like, you know. So I'm not really sure if that's what it does, like it makes you go number two or whatever. Um, but some people, you know, you read, you hear a lot of things about this, and but then you have your representatives that um, are promoting this stuff like with the actual drinks that I had and the, um, the tea and the drops that you had to put into your tongue let me tell you something that shit took forever to work okay and I'm not knocking any of this shit but let me tell you something I get a lot of these things a lot of people always ask me to review these products I've gotten many a times where could you um, review my those wraps let me tell you something I don't do those wraps I've done it once and when I had that thing on I actually had to take it off after like um, I wore it for 45 minutes. I didn't take it off. But as I wore it, my heart was palpitating. I was getting so dizzy, you know what I'm saying, nauseous. And for that entire day, once I put that wrap on, I wore it for 45 minutes. And for the rest of the day, when I didn't have it on, I was so sick, okay? And I tried it again, and the same thing happened. So me and those wraps, we don't do good. I don't, I don't, I don't do the wraps at all okay i just feel like they're a waste of time and i'll just lose the weight the best way that i can i'm not about to detox my entire body and allow my body to go in shock so i don't do shit like that and i figured let me just try this because i had this for a minute and i've seen it and i said i'm gonna just give it a chance it's 20 sachets in here and if they work then great then i'll buy some more but if they don't then trust and believe i'm not buying it anymore so i don't really know how many of these you're supposed to take a day but like i said i don't drink coffee i don't like coffee so i just take one a day one a day is enough for me i'm not about to sit here and drink this shit all day long because some people like to drink coffee like that and i don't give a damn how total life changing it is i'm not about to do it so we'll see if it works then i will definitely tell you guys and let you guys know and if you see me selling that shit, you, um, you best believe that it works. But if it don't, then I'm really not going to be bothered with it. But yes, yeah, so big shout out to my girl, Brittany, who's giving me all these drink recipes because I will be trying them out. So I want to thank you for taking the time out just to write and email me all of that stuff, girl, because that was like so sweet. You didn't even have to do that. Um... And I so appreciate it because I don't know nothing about making no drink. Shit, I'm surprised I even know about this. I didn't even know this was a screwdriver until somebody said something. I just thought I was drinking vodka and orange juice. The easiest thing that I could make. Mm-hmm. So, now that that is all said and done, let's get on to some... Real talk. So I have three for you guys today. Hopefully I can get to three of them because one of them is super duper long. And I'm sorry. It's like a 15 minute read. Listen, when you guys want to send me a real talk, I have no problem in reading them. Long or not. But I wish y'all motherfuckers could sum that shit up somewhat. You know what I'm saying? Like seriously. I know there's no pages and emails, but a motherfucker gets pages in theirs. But anyway... <laughs> Let's get on to this video. If you need a real talk about your life situation, you could always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk. And also, I want to let you guys know, or not even let you guys know, but the jackass that wrote on my video last week, I think it was a real talk. Yeah, I just removed the comment. I didn't even say anything. Well, you know, I like I said before, and I'm going to say this again, I don't really give a damn who doesn't like me. I'm not here. God did not put me on the face of this earth for everybody to like me and if everybody did like me then I guess the world would be a greater place but that's what makes the world go round we don't all have to like each other and we don't all have to agree but don't take well you know I really don't give a fuck if you write on my video not that I'm a, but I'm I'm far from obnoxious okay I'm far from obnoxious and as far as her whoever this dumb ass was saying oh well there are plenty of hosts that do wig reviews on YouTube first of all I ain't nobody's fucking host okay let's just get that together I am nobody's host because the host gets fucking paid for their time and effort okay and they get paid buku bucks and I'm nobody's fucking host okay this is my channel and this is what the fuck I do but I'm far from obnoxious okay sometimes people need to really look up the meaning of words before they can write them down and use them you know what I'm saying because then that makes you ignorant okay so if you feel like I'm obnoxious that's your opinion I really don't give a shit because just like um, assholes everyone has one the same thing with opinion okay I don't really give a fuck 
And that's just what I had to put out there. I don't really care if you don't like me. and But you say you don't like me and I'm noxious. I'm obnoxious, but at the same time, I'm real. Bitch, please, you so confused. You don't even know whether to wind your ass or scratch your motherfucking watch, okay? Yes, I said wind your ass and scratch your watch. And if anybody is old school, knows what movie that came from, then comment below. And I'm going to let you hear it one more time. He don't know whether to wind his ass or scratch his watch. This came from a movie. And it was a great movie. They actually did a remake of it. Um, yeah, a couple of years ago. A few years ago. It was a great movie. A really great movie. And I love the original version. The second version, I'm not really too... Remake of it, I'm not too thrilled about. But Jill Scott was in it. Was it, was it Jill Scott? Yeah, it was Jill Scott in the second in the second remake. But anyway, so yes, there goes your hints. Okay, I gave you a hint. So let's get on to this real talk, you guys. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is the long one, okay? So let's just go ahead, okay? So this may be long, just to warn, no kidding, okay? So this one is called Real Talk, Haitian Woman Living in America. Call me Megan and call my husband James, okay? Okay, so where do I start? Well, start here. I met my husband about three years ago on an online dating site. He was in Nigeria. I was here in the U.S. We talked for about one year online. Then he asked me for my phone number. I gave it to him. During that time, I was preparing to move to another state in the United States. I needed a change away from my ex and my family. We would keep in contact, though, an app called through What's Up. I never told him I was moving. He never told me he was leaving his country. And somehow, during my move, we lost contact. Actually, I deleted the app because I needed to focus on getting my life in order. Fast forward. I'm now living in Texas and working to rebuilding my broken life. Home bored one day, decided to log back in home. Bored one day, decided to log back into the dating site. And then out of the blue, James reached out to me saying, I'm in the USA. Can we meet? I'm like, yes, we can. Asked him where does he live, he says Texas, ironically in the same city as myself. So I'm like, wow, must be fate. We agreed to meet up. Oh, I forgot to mention he had a working visa. He was employed at the same airport I landed at when I moved to the city and stayed. Fast forward, we date from March till August, married September 2014. I discovered he lived in the Netherlands and had a child. I found this out through information from the mother of his child reaching out to me on Facebook like, hey, your boyfriend is my child's father. At this time, I'm guessing he hadn't told her we are married. She continues to say, I don't know if he told you about us. I'm like, no, he never told me anything about a child or you. He gets home from work. I'm like, do you have a child in the Netherlands? He said, yes. I'm like, I'm fine with that. I want to have children with this man. So I wasn't stressing it. I'm glad he can make children. Shortly after that, she found out that we got married. She takes it upon herself to send me a long ass message on Facebook stating that he told her he only married me for documents to become a U.S. citizen. Fast forward again. Now it's two years into our marriage and his immigration review will be coming up soon. I've helped him start a business. I've also helped him file for immigration papers, a U.S. driver's license, and any other licenses he needed for his businesses. Recently, I found out he's a liar. One day I'm home cooking dinner. Dinner's done, house cleaning, watching a little TV. It's getting to be 10-ish. He's usually home by 9 p.m. every day. So I call him. He said, oh, babe, I'm running late at the office. Had a client walk in the last minute. I'm like, cool, make that money. So I decided to put on some workout clothes and walk around our complex. I'm walking, listening to my tunes, minding my own business when I see a white car pull up on the other side of the complex. Didn't pay it no mind, continued walking, made it to the other side, and turned to walk around again. My gut feeling said, look behind you. So I did. There's my husband getting out of the white car with a woman driver. 
My heart felt like it was in my feet. So I rush home, cried my eyes out, and pull it back together before he gets home. Mind you, he didn't see me, but I saw him. He comes, he comes home, tennis, talking about how long his day was. I really loved this man, and he was honestly afraid to, and was honestly afraid to confront him. I adore him. He's handsome. He's everything I ever dreamt of having in a mate. However, this brought me back to everything the mother of his child told me. So I do some research of my own to find out more about him and her, the mother of his child. I found out that the lady has been admitted into the crazy house in her country, that she tried to commit suicide, and that the government took her child, their children, their child, excuse me. Also found out my husband was deported from the Netherlands back to Nigeria. He never told me this, so I'm guessing she could be telling the truth. Fast forward, a month later, Still hadn't told him what I found out or that I saw him in the car with a woman. So one Sunday, I get a call from a friend I went to college with saying, Hey, I'm in your city. Let's do dinner. I'm so happy at this point because that's what I needed to do. Have some wine and vent to someone that truly cares and loves me. I came home from church, got dressed, preparing for dinner with my friend. I tell my husband, Hey, I'm going to meet my friend from my hometown for dinner. His first question, man or woman? I tell him, a man. He pretends to be fine with it. So I leave my house, drive 20 minutes, pull up to the restaurant, get out of my car, greet my friend with a hug. We begin to talk walking to the restaurant. Out of nowhere, he jumps out yelling and screaming, Hey, I see you. You're going to jail. I guess in his country, you could go to jail for having dinner with another man if you're married. I don't really know. So I'm like, no, you didn't catch me doing anything. This is my friend that I was telling you about. My friend was so embarrassed, he just apologized to me and my husband and left. My problem is this man was just lying about his whereabouts a month ago in the car with another female when he was supposed to be working. I still haven't confronted him about it. He never takes me out on dates. He never takes me to dinner. We never go anywhere. And the sex is so boring. He wants to perform boring. He wants to perform oral, but he wants me to give him oral. If I ask him to take me out, we go to the buffet. All I do is work home, cook, home, clean, and and all for him. He wants me to pick up his dirty underwears, um, clothes off the floor. He wants me to fix his own plates. He wants me to serve him, which I've been doing until I've seen that bull crap a month ago. Now I've been cold. Don't cook or have sex with him. This man wants to do dishes. Um, he wants even, this man won't do dishes. Um, he won't even put his plate in the sink when he's done eating. He cuts his hair in the bathroom and leaves it everywhere. Spills things and walks away like he doesn't know. Asked if I'm, if I ask him to clean or cook, he says that a woman's job, that's a woman's job. And he never says thanks or compliments me or have anything nice to say. He just complains about this or that. He doesn't even like me to work. I don't have any family or friends here. I socialize with coworkers, but I don't trust him to tell my life issues. He works six days a week from dusk to dawn. I admire that he's a hardworking person. I am at my point in my life where I desire honesty, respect, and happiness. As I would appreciate your unbiased opinion, I will attach a photo of us. I'm a confident woman and never had a problem finding a man. I recently met a handsome American man that expresses to me how he wants to wine and dye me and give me good sex and oral. And I'm honestly debating if I should cheat on him or divorce. Well... First of all, that wasn't too long. Now, Megan and James have been married. They met three years ago online, and he is from Nigeria, and she is actually from Haiti. So she is actually really, really pretty, okay? To me, I mean, he's not ugly, but he's not my type. He looked like the fucking chipmunk from Alvin and the Chipmunks, Theodore, the little fat chubby one. And I ain't trying, I ain't showing no shade, but I think, in my opinion, she's too pretty for him. That's my opinion, okay? I think she is way too pretty for him. And that's just my opinion. However, 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 I don't give a fuck what you look like. I ain't about to let you play games with me and do some dumb shit. So, you know, the type of person that I am, 
Um, if I see you getting out of a car with a female and you're supposed to be somewhere else, I don't even give a fuck if you ain't supposed to be somewhere else. Where you ain't supposed to be is in a car with the next bitch. So, me personally, I don't really run off. I like confrontation sometimes. I will confront a motherfucker with no problem. So, that was where you went wrong. You should have confronted him. But, if your heart went down to the ground, then okay, I understand that. Because some people are not confrontational. They don't like confrontation. And I get it. However, you are owed an explanation. And all of this shit about him jumping out, talking about you going to go to jail, you already told him prior to you going to dinner that you was going to dinner with a friend. And he asked you, man or woman? And you said man. So what the fuck is the problem? So you 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 followed me all the way to the restaurant, you psychopath? Like, who does that? For all of that, won't you join us for dinner? But, oh, let's rekindle, let's rethink that. I didn't even invite you, you dumb fuck. Now, here's my thing. I'm about to take a sip of this because this part is really going to piss me the fuck off. When we in a marriage, you know, you guys know I was married, okay? I was married for 11, 12 years. I was married to this motherfucker. And I'm not even going to front. I loved my ex-husband. And I still do care about him. I still do love him. But I'm not about to be your servant. And I'm not about to cater to you like you fucking own me. And you got papers on me, okay? I am not going to fucking pick up your dirty, nasty underwear on the floor, off, off the floor. I'm not, we, we, where do we do that from? If I don't pick up after my motherfucking kids, I'm not about to pick up after you. And you know what? I get it. My husband would cut his face, his, um, shave his, his hair in the bathroom sink or over in the bathroom as well. And of course hair would get all in the thing. But you know, the one thing about him would be he would clean that shit up. There has been a couple of times when I've seen a little bit and I said something and he went right in there and cleaned it up. I'm not about to take your, your plate that you've already ate off up and put it. I, I'm sorry, but I'm not a servant and I'm not about to serve anybody. It's a difference when you treat me good. Maybe I will bring you your plate. Be like, here, babe, you know, cause there's really nothing wrong with that. But when you feel like that's what a woman is supposed to do and that's what a woman's job is, then you know what? I'm not doing none of that shit. Now, if I'm doing it willingly because we are happily married ever after and you are such a great husband and it's like, here you go, honey, here's your plate, you know, hope you enjoy your dinner. Better hope I don't put no rat poison up in that motherfucker. No, on some real shit. You know what I'm saying? Then it's a difference, but I'm not about to serve you. I'm not about to run your bath water. I'm not about to iron your motherfucking clothes, pick up your dirty laundry, and then on top of that, if you spill something, you're about to walk off like you a two-year-old and act like you didn't do that shit or you don't see it, you must be out your rabbit-ass mind if you think you're about to treat me any old type of way. Don't buy me shit. Don't take me nowhere. And then I'm supposed to be your motherfucking slave. You tell that nigga to take his ass right back to fucking Nigeria, okay? If he only married you for the documents, then so be it. Now, only divorce his ass so he don't get his motherfucking documents, okay? People like that or men like that are just pigs, downright pigs. And there's no way changing them, no way. Shape, form, it's hard. You're never going to be able to change them. But let's not forget the fact that he never mentioned that he got a kid in the Netherlands. Like, it's fucked up if you got to ask the motherfucker. You, so you got a kid? Like, I'm sorry, but did you fail to forget to tell me something? I don't think that anybody should ever forget to tell somebody, oh, yeah, I got a kid somewhere. Like, who does that? So either you're trying to hide something or you're trying to hide something. I mean, there's really no excuse for not telling anybody that they have a child. But, you know, to each his own, you know what I mean? That's why I be telling y'all, them fucking online sites, there'll be a bunch of fucking weirdos, and I don't do them no more. It's bad enough there's a bunch of weirdos that you can meet in person, but to meet them online is like, okay, now I gotta really try to figure your dumb fucking ass out, and I'm... I'm sorry. I don't have time for that. I'd just rather be by myself than try to figure out somebody. Are they really official or what? Because it just takes too much time to figure out somebody as it is. And to have to be in a relationship with somebody online and you don't verbally communicate for a whole year, you guys went back and forth through the dating online site. And then he finally asks you for your phone number. That right there is like got me. Because if I was a dude and I was really feeling a woman, 
I'm going to like, listen, let me get your number after like a week or so, because I would really like to communicate with you off of here. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to wait for you to sign in. I would like to text you and call you. I don't really want to communicate with you through POF or match.com or whatever. I would like to talk to you verbally and get to know you. Not wait no fucking year. If you got to wait a fucking year, then there's something going on in your life. That's just what like people, they date people for like 10 years that they've never met. You know what I'm saying? They meet them they get catfish they've been dating these people for like 10 fucking years and they've never met each other and then they get heartbroken when they finally meet them and they're like they're not the person they really thought they were but you're the asshole who went so long without figuring these people out like i'm sorry but if we're dating each other after a few months if i cannot meet you in person i don't even know what a few months is it has to be like two months for me because I'm a very impatient person on certain things, certain elements. Uh, I just, you're not about to catfish me. You know what I'm saying? So if I am going to date someone or I meet someone online, I'm not going to keep, you're not going to be sending me messages through apps and all of that shit and I never get to meet you all these years. Man, listen, I'm not about to be faithful to you. I'm not even going to call you my boo, my bae, nothing. We just be pen pals. You know what pen pals is when you used to write motherfuckers letters back in the day. Mm hmm So I really don't understand when people get catfished. Like, like I mean, we get catfished in, in real life. You know what I'm saying? Like, seriously, like you meet someone, like I told you girls, it'd be their representative that you meet. And then like months down the line, you figure out, oh, oh, this nigga is a really a sleaze ball. He's a real sleaze ball. To me, that's catfishing somebody too, because you then misrepresented yourself and told me a bunch of lies. And now that I get to know who you are, nigga, you catfished me. And that's how I feel about the one that I just got rid of. That nigga catfished me. Okay, but I catfished your ass the fuck back because you thought I was real motherfucking nice, right? Not when I went upside your face and bashed that shit the fuck in and then called the police on you. Mm. Then you realize who the bitch really was or did you forget who the fuck I was from back in the day? Never, never put it past you. Never. But like I was saying, like, you know, it's funny how social media can be a good thing and it can also be a bad thing. Sometimes you got to take what people say to you, like his baby mother that reaches out to you. You got to take what she says and think about it. You may not have to take it as 100%, but you got to take it as something because there's no reason why this lady would be reaching all the way out to you for nothing. Listen, this bitch live all the way in the Netherlands. She, there's no way that he's going to be in a relationship with her right now. At this time, he's all the way across the world. You know what I'm saying? So there's a reason for everything. And don't think Think that sometimes women just do things like this because they're catty and jealous. No, it's because they have a reason to tell you something. And maybe it's trying to save your ass for some bullshit. And now you're in a predicament where you don't want to be bothered with him. Here's my thing, Megan. Don't cheat on James. Leave his ass the fuck alone. Get a divorce. Why cheat on him? But here's my thing too. Why cheat on him? Why not just divorce him? And don't be bothered with anybody for the time. Yeah, so the next one said, the, the new guy that wants to get what you says, he can whine and dine you and treat you real good and give you good sex. I'm sorry, but if a man said to me, I'm going to give you good sex, I might have to smack him in his fucking mouth. Because first of all, watch what the fuck you say to me. Don't get fresh. Don't be fresh. Yes, we grownups, but watch how you fucking motherfucking come to me. Because don't think that I'm some ratchet or some thought that you could just feel like you can tell me I'm going to give you some good dick. Like... I don't, I don't like shit like that. Like, that shit is not a turn on to me. Unless you and me been married for some years. You know what I'm saying? My ex-husband used to say shit like that to me. That was different. That was us. But I don't think no new niggas should say no shit like that to a woman. That's not... To me, when a man says some shit like that to you and y'all have not been together for... But or y'all even ain't y'all even ain't together you and this new dude. So for for him to come at you and tell you he's gonna give you some good sex and all of the shit, listen, that already lets me know right there this is what you all about, nigga. So you could get step into. So I wouldn't even bother cheating on him with this new dude. I wouldn't fuck with this new dude. Now I damn sure wouldn't fuck with um what is his name? James ass neither, okay? For real. For one, he got into a car. Who God knows what he was doing in the car with this other woman. You adore him. That's great. 
he don't seem to adore you too much because he got you working like you a slave on a motherfucking acre back in the early days, picking cotton and serving the master. That motherfucker should be lucky he ain't got a plate of hot food on his lap, okay? I'm just saying. I will put a whole bunch of itching powder in his goddamn briefs, his underwear. He a nigga wear this shit to work. I'm just saying. Because sometimes I could be real petty. Um, and sometimes the pettiness, you know. I will tell you a, t a little story real quick. Uh, yes, I am a little petty. And um, this dude, that I, the one that I got rid of, Jamel asked. So, I don't, first of all, I don't like when people talk shit to me. I don't like shit like that. I just don't like when you piss me off. Even if you don't talk shit to me and you start irritating me, you calling me, talking about I'm hungry. Like, why the fuck is you calling me for, okay? Like, I would say shit like that. So, okay, you so hungry. Great. When I get home, I'm about to pour me a drink. Would you like one? Oh, you would? I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to get you a drink. Don't come to me when you shitting up a storm a couple hours later. Oh, did I put, oh, oh, I forgot to mention I put some shit up in your drink. Your ass can be shitting all night. Okay, because I'm petty. I will hold some shit in and get real petty with a motherfucker. I don't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Those are the things that I do and have done. Because I, what? Petty. Mm-hmm. Petty as I am. But, in my opinion, I really think that you should just count your blessings because you are able to afford to live on your own. And count your blessings that you did not have any children with this man because he's not the one for you. And what you should do is just get away from him. Move. Separate. Divorce. And move on with your life. Stop helping people that are not worth it. Because you are helping him and he ain't helping you do a goddamn thing. I'm sorry, but I'm not about to let any man walk all over me. Like I have said many a times, I'd rather be happy alone than be with somebody in a relationship and be miserable and stress the fuck out. Those things I just don't do. And I have come to terms and, and with, okay, I don't have no man. And I'm fine with that. I'm happy because the type of person I am, I'm very set in my ways. I don't like anybody trying to tell me what the fuck to do. You know what I'm saying? I don't like anybody taking my space. I don't like anybody trying to lay next to me and cuddle. I, there's a lot of things that I just don't like as a person, which is crazy because I'm just that type of person. So for me, it's best that I am, you know, in my own space. So like I said, I am happy with who I am and not being with anybody. That's just fine. Some people can't go without being in a relationship. And I don't know for those type of people that need to be in a relationship, you need to find yourself first and find your soul. Bitches, take that shit out. Pull your soul out. Look at, look at that shit and be like, you know what? I'm going to have to doctor your ass the fuck up because for real. Some people may think like, oh, I'm bitter towards men, but I'm really not bitter. I'm fucking smart towards the shit because I have been through so many things in my life and enough relationships. Let's not forget I have five kids. I have five kids and four baby daddies, okay? And I'm not ashamed to admit that because I'm going to tell you what. I, that's right. I have five kids and four baby daddies. And I'm going to tell you why because I'm not going to stay with somebody just to have kids with them. If, nigga, if you disrespect and start pissing me the fuck off, then goodbye. Bye, Felicia. Goodbye. I'm done with you. And then the next one come along and we good and we getting good. You know what I'm saying? We doing good and I got a kid with you. That's how it happens because I'm not about to let anybody fucking deter me and fucking stress me out for too long. I'm not. So that's why I ended up having you know, five kids with four different people. But you know something? I don't really give a fuck what people think of me. I don't care if they say, oh, this girl got all these baby daddies. So fucking what? I don't even give a shit. Because for one, at the end of the day, I take care of every last one of my kids and I have taken care of them. And I still have take care of them. I have grown ass kids that's 24 and fucking 20 and shit like that. And I still take care of them. I send my son in New York. I send him pizza through Domino's. I have it delivered to him or whatever he wants for my grandson. I'm, I'm there and I give it to them because whatever they, they're in need, I'm there. You know what I'm saying? And the same thing with my daughter. She's always working and I'm always there for her. And I make sure that her son is taken care of. My grandbaby. So, you know what I'm saying? I don't really care about what people may think of me. You can judge me because, yeah, I might have had five kids with four different people. But you know what? You had never, ever seen my kids go without, okay? And they have always can say, yo, this right here, this lady right here, we always had a roof over our head, food on the table, and shit on our back, and whatever we needed. So, 
kudos to her. My kids will let you know in a heartbeat. And if you try anything, you best believe you better watch out for them motherfuckers because they will come for you, okay? They definitely will come for you. But count your blessings, Megan, and move on because he's not worth it. And like I said, you're too pretty for him. I mean, to each his own looks are not everything, but you know what? When people could be evil to you like that, then you start seeing everything. And to me, he's just a worthless piece of shit. And if he feels like that's what a woman is here for, then that can only allow you to think of what type of person he is. When a man can think of a woman like that, then that means that he has no respect for a woman as in a human being. And with those type of people, you really don't want around. So yes, give Megan your opinion of how you feel about the situation. Okay, so this one here, okay, Real Talk Wednesday. Hey, April, first I want to say thanks. You have helped me in the past, and your advice is so real. I love my mom. She is my world, but she is also an evangelist and can be real and can be really real with you, but not how this person needs it. You can use her name because I really don't care. I really don't give. Okay, so she said you can use her name because I really don't give. I guess she means a fuck. Anyways, in early 2012, this girl named Lisa swore she wanted to talk to my friend in order to learn about college and what to expect. He went to community college for less than a year, mind you. She got his number, and as soon as he drove off to visit his grandmother, who was sick, she calls him. She goes and cuts her hair like my sister's, who the guy had been got who the guy has been wanting for ages and it's well known by everyone. Okay, so this young lady, I'ma just call her Colleen, his friend was chasing after this guy that they know. This guy basically wanted Colleen's sister. So she got his number and as soon as he drove off to visit his grandmother who was sick, she started calling him. Um Damn. Okay. She goes and cuts her hair like my... Goes and cuts the grandmother's hair, I guess. Like my sister's, who's the guy has been wanting for aging. And it's well known by everyone. I'm really confused right there. She got padding, oh, butt pads and lifters and has done everything, even getting a tan to look more like my sister. Okay. So this young lady is stalking the guy and is also stalking her sister's looks. He asked my sister... Um, we're going to call him Jeffrey. He asked, Jeffrey asked my sister to be his date on my sister's birthday, which is around Valentine's Day. And my sister declined, but Lisa offered to take Jeffrey out. Lisa brought him about $100 worth of stuff, and he got her a $5 giant card and a bear sprayed with the cologne she brought him. He bosses Lisa around and basically puts her on display. His friend's his friends ran a train on Lisa, from what I heard, and social media confirms, at his hotel party, where she was also the only female. Lisa got hired um, got hired on where he worked, okay, where Jeffrey worked at. Got fired, then she got Jeffrey fired. And wherever he worked, Lisa went up there and made it so bad he'd end up quitting. Jeffrey rather boost and sell drugs out of her mother's house, out of Lisa's mother's house. He had it so she was signed for illegal property and she didn't care. Lisa didn't care. Got her mother to put a car in her name so that they can go wherever they wanted. They moved into an apartment. Lisa and Jeffrey moved into an apartment and she paid for everything and still does. No matter how many times he gets caught cheating or goes out of town with her car. He went to New York, California, Miami, and if she hadn't paid, she would have gone to get Vegas with him. The car got repo, and they didn't get evicted because her dumbass mother paid their rent, but not her own. But she wouldn't even allow her mother to sleep on their couch. Wow. Needless to say, I've spoken with Jeffrey before and after he left her alone and focused a while on himself. But my, but my mother said he'll go back as, as long as she'll take care of him. And he can still fuck whoever he wants. He'll go back. I can't speak to him now because Lisa made it her mission to block me from everything. And he told me the last time we saw each other, he knows it's not right. But Lisa wants to pay his bills. So it's whatever he, she wants. 
and whatever to hit him up through, and whatever, just hit him up to a family member. She swears I want that dog, Jeffrey, and wants to fight me so bad and says all this shit about me, but at the same time wants to be in my family's face. And my mom tried to speak some sense into both her and her her own mother, but I think she's too nice and naive, Lisa's mother. I'm not there yet just to speak to her and tell her she's foolish and can do better because I'd much rather brat her fucking face in. What do I do? Thanks. Okay, so basically... Colleen and Jeffrey have been friends forever, okay? And so Lisa came into the picture. Jeffrey is Colleen's kind of like best friend. Jeffrey also liked Colleen's sister. But Colleen's sister, little sister, I think this little sister, ain't even trying to give him the time of day. So Lisa's just like basically a jump off. She'll just do whatever to keep a man. And that was also her friend. But she's gotten a train ran on her, which is kind of fucked up. But if, she, you know, it is what it is. Maybe some bitches like that. I'm not really sure. But basically, Colleen's best friend, Jeffrey, is using Lisa. Because Lisa pays for everything, bills, cars, rent, whatever. But treats her own family like shit. You know what I'm saying? So, basically, I'm not really sure. But Lisa has been talking about Colleen like she ain't shit. And what she wants to do is just... I'm not really sure what brat her face in is, but I'm basically, maybe she wanted to say bash her face in. You know what I'm saying? She probably wanted to bash her face in. And what would I do? Okay, so what would I do? Because it was kind of confusing. I had to, like, figure this out on my own. And it's kind of, like, petty to me. I would mind my motherfucking business. That's what I would do. I wouldn't even worry about bashing nobody's face in. Let a bitch talk shit about me. I love when people talk about me sometimes. Because a lot of people in this world are so immature. And the reason why they talk about you is because they're so hateful and jealous of you. It's whether you have anything good to say or bad. Someone is going to judge you and talk shit about you. However, I'm not going to go around bashing people's faces in anymore. That's one thing that I have grown out of, okay? And when I say that, I mean that. Like, I have grown out of that. I am 42 years old. And I have bashed in enough faces and have a record behind that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, a bitch like me tries to stay away from a lot of drama. I'm not, I don't like drama, you know what I'm saying? I am I try to be as nice as possible to people because the type of person I am, if you stir me the wrong way, I'm about to cut your motherfucking throat open. So, it's best that you just leave me alone. It's best that I stay away from a lot of people that have a lot of shit going on with them. But to bash somebody's face in, I'm not even going to bother because, honestly, she's worthless and she's not worth your time. Why waste your breath on someone like that that is not worried about how you feel and ain't even worried about herself? She's not worried about herself because she's basically buying her love from somebody that really don't give a fuck about her. And just like your mother said, he's going to go back to her because as long as she pays for everything and takes care of him and he can fuck whoever he wants, then he's going to stay there. Why would he? Why would he leave? You know what I'm saying? He's got the best of both worlds, cake and ice cream and confetti and going to eat all that shit, Okay. I wouldn't waste my time bashing in anybody's face because you know what? Sometimes in our lives, regardless of how old we are, we have to grow up and be ladylike. You know what I'm saying? Like back in the days, I'd be ready to fight somebody. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm no pussy and I'm no punk, but I'm also somebody's grandmother to somebody's and a mother. I don't have time for that, but you're not about to push me around. That I'm not going to have. But a lot of times, I try to avoid a lot of drama. That's why you don't see me doing collabs and conversating with a lot of people on YouTube. I'll basically stick to myself. They got there. There are YouTube clips, clicks where they will go to hair to um hair shows together and all of this shit. Leave me the fuck out of that shit, okay? Because I don't need to be anywhere with none of these bitches smiling in their face and then talking shit about them behind their back or them talking about me. For all that, let me just be me and I'ma just do April. I don't have time for that. I stay in my lane and bitch, I hope you stay the fuck in yours because if you don't, I'ma make sure that you get up in that shit one way or the other. So with me, I just basically keep to myself. Now, if you come and harm me, then it's going to be an issue. Also, if you come and try to intimidate me, then it's going to be an issue. So as long as you don't come in my face, then I'm cool with that. You know what I'm saying? Like you can say whatever you want to fucking say. I've already had enough issues. I have friends that I thought were my friends and then enough shade was thrown. Okay. I can read behind the lines and the type of person that I am. It's like, you know what? I'm not even going to say nothing to her because if I do, it's going to be all sparks and fumes because that's the type of person that I am. 
okay? And I know the type of person that she is, and she's not going to be like that. So, and for her best interest and mine, I'm going to leave her the fuck alone, and I'm going to have no more words left to say to her. And maybe she'll figure it the fuck out of why I'm not speaking to her anymore. You know what I'm saying? But with people like that, that's really petty or do dumb things... There's no reason to retaliate with them because in the end, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. That shit comes to light. Just like you you, you think that the shit that you do that I'm not aware of, I hate fake bitches, okay? And that's one thing I don't like is fake motherfucking people in general, female or female. Don't go portraying to be something that you're not, okay? I just don't like shit like that. If your ass is boring and dried the fuck up, then your ass is boring and dried the fuck up. Don't go doing shit to make it seem like you popping and you popular on social media. When, bitch, I know you bought those views. I know you did all of that just for fucking attention. Nobody gives a fuck. You're irrelevant. But just like with her, you're irrelevant. And when I'm talking about, like, you know, don't do shit to be thinking that you're popular and I hate fake bitches, I mean, like, in general. I'm not talking about anybody in particular. I'm just trying to use an example as in general. So with females like her, you know what I'm saying, I wouldn't really feed into it because that's what a lot of them like you to do. And then when you feed into it and the first thing you do is you pop them in their motherfucking mouth, then you the bad guy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm the bad guy. Oh, I'm the bad guy. You know what I'm saying? So that's why with me, I stay away from a lot of drama, a lot of females. I have only a few friends out here in Arizona, which is my friend Nicole, okay? And my friend Victoria, who also does YouTube videos. And also my friend, my very close friend, Miss Shay Love. And unfortunately, she's not here in Arizona. She's in Texas. But those are my friends. Like, I don't really have any friends. And sometimes I like it like that because you know what? I'm the type of female I like, or the person, rather, I'm the type of person. I don't like too many people around me, and I don't like people around me all the time. I don't like people popping up over my motherfucking house. And I don't like people bothering me all the time. I'm a, I am like to keep to myself a lot. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a real talkative person all of the time unless I'm doing videos. It's a difference. You know what I'm saying? But when I'm out in public, I can socialize with people and I can have a really good time. So if we was to hang out, then I'm chill. But I just don't like a lot of people around me. And I don't like drama. So I kind of steer away from that. And because I have kids, I'm real, more or less like a family person. I love to be around my family and just do things with my family. And you know what I'm saying? All of that hanging out with your girls, shaking your booty and rump shaking, smiling at your niggas' faces. I've done that, did that, and I'm over that. You know what I'm saying? I'm 42 fucking years old. And I dedicate my life to my kids. And that's it. Some people might be like, girl, get your life. And you know what? I did. I actually did. And these are my life. These children are my life. But a lot of people don't realize that. But it is what it is. And that's what it is. So, honestly, Colleen, don't even worry about her. Because she done dug her own burial space. She done made her bed. Let her lie in it. Let your friend be. Because he's really worthless. If she thinks you want him, then let her continuously think that. Because he doesn't even want her. But she's really not worth your time to waste. Now, if the bitch... If the bitch comes and approaches you, then you might have to pop her in a motherfucking face. You know, I'm not promoting violence because I don't, but I ain't about to let no bitch try to run all over me neither. That's one thing that I don't allow. I don't. Like I said, I'm 42 years old. You either going to fucking respect me for who the fuck I am. Are you going to fall the fuck back? Bottom line. I don't really do too well with friends. So, yes. So, next story. I just want to start off by saying you should have your own talk show. I've been watching you for years. Thank you. And she's right. I just should. I should have my own motherfucking talk show. I have a real problem. Like, my whole world was set on fire a few weeks ago. I changed the names. Just call me Jody. My sister-in-law, Christy. Let me start from the beginning. My brother has been my best friend for all of my life. I love him so much and he means the world to me. And so does his happiness. We have grown up in a strict Catholic family forever. And my mom is really religious and my family is really religious. So much so that my aunt came out of the closet two years ago 
and none of my family has spoken to her since. About a year ago, my brother met this beautiful, lovely woman by the name of Christy. She's so sweet and thoughtful, and she has a four-year-old daughter. Her own hair products, his um, has her own hair products his own car and house. I don't know what that means. And we were so happy for him. And he finally found an equal and not some ghetto bird looking for a handout. Boy, I've got stories for days with the whole ass girls he used to bring around us. But anyway, back to the story. I come over because he was really sick, my brother. So I was bringing him his favorite soup. And I have a key to the house. So I go through the back door and girl, guess what I saw? I saw him on his knees giving Christy a blowjob. I instantly gasped and quickly ran out the door. Without them hearing me, my whole world has changed. I couldn't believe Christy was a man. She looked like a beautiful woman. I'm going to attach her picture because please don't show anyone. I don't know what I should do. I confronted him about it. I mean, myself, I really don't care. He seems so happy. And they look like the perfect, beautiful family. But it's just that it hasn't sit right with me ever since. And I haven't, and I even miss big family events like my mother's 50th birthday party and my god niece's baptism because of this. I love my brother. Please help. OMG. Okay, so first of all, damn. I honestly thought the picture that she attached was a picture of herself. Christy looked like a woman, like straight up like a woman, like you, he looked like a woman, like he had, okay, so basically, okay, basically, Jody's brother, Christy, has been with a young lady, no, excuse me, Jody's brother is her best friend, she loves her brother with all of her heart, and he met a girl called Christy. She said, my sister-in-law. Now, I don't really know if they're really married, married, like married, married, or is she just calling her that? Because, you know, sometimes that happens. But anyway, Christy is so sweet, and she has a four-year-old daughter. Oh, she has her own hair care products lines, her own car, and her own house, because this is a hair care product she's holding up in a picture. And they live together. I'm not really sure if the little girl, the four-year-old girl lives there, but... But we know that Christy didn't give birth to this four-year-old girl. If she did, then I don't know how. But anyway, so the family really likes Christy, the sister and the daughter-in-law, the sister-in-law, whatever. And her brother, Jody's brother, was sick, so she went to give to bring him his favorite suit. Well, Jody went in through the back door because she has a key. And I guess he wasn't that sick because he was on his knees sucking his wife's you know what. Not her clit either. His um, vitamin D. So he's a transgender, I think. Transsexual. I don't know. I don't really know. I don't know which one is which. Or which one is which. I don't categorize these. these. Um, I don't categorize people like this. I don't. And when I say people like this, I don't mean in a bad way. I just think like titles are not like the best thing in the world. And to me, we're all human beings. And I love everybody. So I don't care if you're a man with a dick and you want to wear dresses and wigs and look just like a woman. That's cool. We can hang out. Because y'all seem like y'all are the nicest people. They're real females. Like born females you know what I'm saying biological females so I don't title people you know what I'm saying I don't so that's why when I say I don't know if they're transgender transsexual I don't know the difference between what is what and it's so much to keep up with that it's not really important to me as long as you're a human being and you act you act like a human being then that's all that matters to me so I don't really care about a title on anybody there should not be any titles but you know what this is what the world is so basically Jody is devastated and she said they look like such a happy family. So I'm trying to figure out. She said, did she confront him? Oh, she said, should I confront him about it by herself? Yeah, hello. Okay, that's your brother. That's your family. A lot of people, you know, what I hate the most when someone comes out of the closet, and I wish they wouldn't even call it that, but when you, when you are gay and you like the same sex and you finally have admitted it to your family members i hate those type of family members who just want to disown you because that's what your lifestyle is that's just so sad why would you be so hateful as a person to disown anyone because of who they love that's just sad like really it's sad if one of my kids became gay you really think that i would be upset 
as long as the person that they're with does not disrespect them, then I'm happy. You could be a fucking alien. I don't give a shit. Just be respectable, respectful to my child. That's all that matters to me. You know what I'm saying? And love them. And just the main key word is respectful. But I can't stand when family members disown another family member because they're gay or whatever. What does it matter? You know what I'm saying? I don't really see the difference. That If you really care for someone and love someone, then you shouldn't be upset about who they chose in life. But, Jody, that's your brother, and he's like your best friend, and you love him with all your heart. And like you said, you wouldn't judge him because that's not the type of person that you are from I see what I'm, I'm reading. However, if... It would be nice of him to let you know. And maybe he felt like he was a little bit afraid because of what your aunt went through when they found out that she was a lesbian. You know what I'm saying? So maybe he didn't want that type of judgment. However, if he gave you a key to his house, maybe he did want you to find out sooner or later. But God damn. Um, me, personally, I wouldn't have gave you a key to my house if I knew that my life that I was living with someone is a lie to my family. You know what I mean? Maybe he needs us to be able to confide in someone. However, you should say something to him, but just you and him. You know what I mean? Don't bring anybody else into your family into this because... I know for a fact that if your family is like that with your own aunt, could you imagine how they would be towards your brother? Especially because they've met Christy and they feel like she's a woman. And then to come to find out that she's actually honestly not a woman would hurt your mother's heart. Like really hurt your mother's heart. But don't avoid him. You know what I mean? They didn't see you. That's fine. But I would honestly say, listen, the time that you were sick, I came in to bring you over some soup. I let myself in through the back door. And what I saw was you giving Christy a blowjob. That's all you need to say. I'm pretty sure he's going to explain the rest to you. Okay? There's nothing wrong with being gay. There's nothing wrong with a man loving another man or a female loving another female. Everybody's human and everybody's wants and needs are totally different. You know what I'm saying? I get it. You know what I'm saying? Some people like both male and female. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? That's what makes the world go round. And a lot of people will say, oh, that's not what God wants. But how do you really know what God wants? Okay? I'm not going to sit up here and preach, and, and preach about religion. But honestly, if it were me, I would definitely say something. Don't make yourself feel uncomfortable around someone because of what they have going on. He could feel just as uncomfortable around you because he hasn't revealed to you who he really is. Now, if Christy's a great person and you love her and et cetera, et cetera, then, hey, at least he knows that he has you in his corner. You know, and sometimes some things are left just better unsaid, meaning you can go and let him know what you have seen. And so he can confide in you because sometimes when people have to live their life like that, kind of like somewhat of a lie and they can't tell a person everything, it kind of eats them up inside and they don't really have anyone to talk to. You know what I'm saying? Because of past experiences of things that they've seen. So sometimes that you have to let them know, listen, I'm here for you, regardless of how you may feel or may think. I'm here for you. So maybe you need to let him know that before you kind of like bust his bubble. You know, just go and have a nice conversation with him. It doesn't have to be at his home. Maybe have a brother and sister day out. You know what I'm saying? And let, let him know like how much you care for him. And that regardless of what he is or who he is in life, that you love him. And then you bring it to him slowly and then let him know, you know, I'm not going to say anything to mommy because some things are just left better unsaid. You know what I'm saying? Older people, sometimes they don't understand. And it's unfortunate that that's how the world is. And it's unfortunate that certain religions are just so strict that they just don't understand and they rather banish a person from their lives. And when you kind of think about it, do you think that God really would want you to dislike and hate one of your own people, your own family members because of who they chose to love and just banish them from the family? To me, that would be sinful and hurtful. You know what I'm saying? So... I would just have a great conversation with him and let him know how much you're there for him as a person and that he can tell you anything and then let him know. But don't feel discouraged and don't feel ashamed because you're ashamed and how do you think he may feel? And I'm sorry, but Christy is badass. Shit, she make bitches like me look bad and she's not really a born female, but God damn. So, yes, that was my real talk for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you check out my head wrap video and share this video with friends and family. And remember to always love yourselves. You know what I'm saying? Love yourselves and don't ever let anyone tear you down. So, on that note, stay diva and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. I love you guys and I'll see you on a soon video.